One of the increasingly popular uh, techniques being used in new product development is a, uh, an analytical technique called conjoint analysis. Uh, the early academic work was done by Professor Paul Green at the Wharton School back in the 1960s, and it's really come into very wide use now. Very useful for a number of reasons uh, that I'll get to in a few minutes. What is conjoint analysis? Well, uh, I think the opening assumption is that if you ask customers, do you want this feature, do you want this feature, they want everything. But that's not the way it works in the real world. We have to make trade-offs between various features because we usually can't afford to have absolutely everything. So uh, what Green suggests is a technique where we give people combinations, we give people pairs or uh, groups of products that are a combination of various features and ask them which one they prefer. And the example I always like to give is the following. Let's say I'm gonna, you're gonna be flying to Paris from here in Boston, and I'm gonna give you two options, okay? Option one is it's United Airlines. Uh, it's a Boeing 767. Uh, the seat width is this, and the seat pitch, i.e. the distance in front of you is this. Uh, the food quality is pretty good. Uh, the uh, on-time performance is uh, 80% and the price is $1,450. So that's option one. Option two is it's Air France. It's a, uh, uh, an Airbus A340. Uh, the seat is a little bit wider, but the seat pitch is a little bit less. Uh, the food quality, of course, it's Air France, so the food is terrific. Uh, um, the on-time performance is a little less good. It's 70% the price is a little higher, it's $1,650. Which of those two do you prefer? Now, if I do that, what I'm doing is I'm implicitly asking you to trade off a bunch of potential features or attributes in a product. Airline, aircraft, seat width, seat pitch, food quality, on-time performance, and price. And if I create an experimental design and give you enough combinations of products like that, I can derive out of that how much utility you, you derive or how much importance you place on each of those various attributes. And that's referred to as conjoint analysis. The, the term comes, it's a contraction of the words considered jointly. Uh, it's a somewhat complex thing to do, although there are great tools that have made it quite a bit easier today. The real benefits of conjoint analysis are twofold. First of all, the variables can be categorical rather than continuous. So we could have Air France and United, where there's no obvious higher, lower, interval, anything like that. They're simply categorical. The other thing is it's the only technique in all of market research that has been shown to be valid in evaluating price. That is, it answers the question of how much a customer would be willing to pay for a given feature or level of some attribute in a product. Uh, the old method of asking a customer, uh, how much would you be willing to pay for this feature is just shown to be completely invalid. The customer either doesn't realistically know or they'll game the system. I mean, no one in their right mind, would, if, a, if a car dealer asked them, how much would you pay for this car, no one in their right mind would tell them the truth. And that's a problem in that old style of trying to get at pricing. Conjoint analysis presents price as a trade-off in a whole series of attributes works much, much better.